Here we are, love. Come on. I'm sorry about all this clutter. You shouldn't have to put up with all this. Oh, told you. It's OK. I don't mind. It's not much to show, really, is it? The remains of a business. The remains of all my hopes. I thought it was going to be a wonderful partnership when we set out. Me and Greg for life. Now when I think what I've lost. You didn't lose it. He took it. I was so naive, Rita. Listen, uh, is there anything else we should be nailing down? Anything else we can carry away from the wreck before he does? No, not that I can think of. We've closed the office. I've stopped the bank account and the car. No, I think he's got all the money he can take. There's not that much left. Tell me to mind my own business if yeah, you want to. I wouldn't do that, Rita. I don't know what I would have done without your help. Oh, give over. But, um, out of your mum's legacy, can I ask you, how much have you got left? Well, <laughs> hardly best thinking about it. it was... I had nearly £50,000. And now it's just a bit above ten. He got that much? It's gone, Rita. I don't think he's got any of it. It went on... Well, setting up the business, legal fees, rent. All that money gone. How could I have been so stupid? Hey, you've got to look forward now, Sally. Not back. Listen, you got shut of him and you're still in one piece. You've got to put your life back together again now. You and the girls. And I, I don't know if Kevin features in any of your plans at all or... Or if you feature in any of Kevin's. One salad sandwich? Cheers. Some your dinner. And um, a couple of them fairy cakes. I'm going to visit Les. Les fairy cakes. Yeah, well, I hope they choke him. That's the rotten thing to say. He could have died, you know. Yeah, so they say. But he didn't. And it certainly wasn't Martin's fault. Look, I don't want to have a fight about it. No, you're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't take it out on you. Well, it's not my fault if Martin made a mistake. The only mistake Martin made was turning his back on Les while he stole dangerous drugs. Oh, come on. Look, Martin is a damn good nurse. He's not slipshod. He's meticulous, so don't expect me to keep quiet. Your father's got him turned out of a job he loves just so he can come the hospital out of compensation. Oh, God. OK, Captain. Got a good job there. Quid was said, wasn't it? I thought we said two quid. Oh, yeah, well, what you thought was wrong. What you said was clean his car for a quid, mister. Uh, seeing that you've done a good job. Might be a pound fifty next time. Ta, any time. What's your name again? Tyrone. Here, who's that bird? Toya, she's called. Toya Battersby. You want to stay away from her, though. Bad news. Whole family's bad news. Why? Do you fancy her? Nah, I don't bother with women, me. Wish I was as smart as you. Who lives at number seven? I've never seen anyone go in there. Oh, you won't do. Bloke called Curly. He was wanted by the police, so he did a runner. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's not wanted anymore now. Good bloke, and all. Only thing we know for sure is he's gone abroad somewhere. So the police can't find him to tell him he's not wanted. Hiya, Ty. Oh, hiya. Well, I'll see you later. Yeah. Hey, shouldn't you two be at school? It's no good. I can't help wondering what these people are doing to my Zoe. Well, see here, Ashley. She went with them of her own accord. I know, but they've got her that mixed up. She doesn't know what's right anymore. Well, if we're talking straight, she never did have much grasp of right and wrong. Oh, well, that's true. You must admit that, Ashley. Well, it don't stop me being worried about her. No. Well, that does your heart more credit than your head. No. Maud's right. She's no good for you. No, I never said that. No. Because you were being tactful, I know that, Maud. She's no good for you, Ashley, love. She never will be. Hello, Audrey, love. Hello, My little team taking good care of you. Oh, yes, yes, no complaints. Uh, do you want any raffle tickets <clears throat> for the draw for that big amper? No, I've got my raffle tickets, thank you, Maud. Have you? 
I don't remember selling you any. In fact... No, no, actually, it was Fred. Who urged you to buy some? Yes. No. Yes. Uh, Ashley, did you sell Councillor Mrs Roberts some raffle tickets? I couldn't tell you. Well, that's settled then. Bye-bye, uh, Audrey. <laughs> Take up mode. Don't forget oh, your milk. You see, you're rushing, <laughs> yeah, 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 Well, you never can be too careful, can you? <laughs> I'm trying to be public-spirited here. Just tell the doc I'm willing to volunteer. If he wants to conduct any experiments on this here Viagra, all he has to do is ask. How are you, Toya? Hey, have you had your dinner yet? Dinner? I had that in the middle of this morning. Breakfast, that was about cock shout. You get your grub miles too early in here. That's the trouble with the health service. It's all geared for the convenience of the staff. Us, the customer, but for who they'd all be on the dole, we come last. Yeah, well, anyway, I've bought you a fairy cake. Oh, uh, right, uh, I'll have that later. Hey, I'm coming home tomorrow. Great. So you're feeling better? Better than I was, that's all. Face it, Sawyer. I might never be what I used to be. I reckon they've ruined my best years. Probably shortened my life. And for that, they're going to have to pay me a lot of money. Fair's fair. Listen, there's something I need to ask you. Feel free. That's what fathers are for. I'm here to guide you. No, I'm not after advice. I want a straight answer. Did you nick some pills when Martin Platt weren't looking? Where the hell did you get that idea? It doesn't matter, did you? Is that what Martin Platt's saying? That's criminal libel, that is. <sighs> Les, just tell me. Is it true? You shouldn't have to do this. But I swear, without a word of a lie, it's a load of rubbish. It's Martin Platt trying to cover himself. And if that's not God's honest truth, may I choke on this fairy cake? What are you doing here? What do you want? Well, can I come in? If you must. Don't be like that, Mum. You look like you can't stand the sight of me. What the hell do you expect, Tony? Eh? The red carpet? Mum, I'm here because I had to come. I had to see you to find out if you're okay. I've been really worried about you. Oh, yeah? When have you worried about anybody but yourself? It's the truth. Look, I know you blame me for what happened to Des, and I admit it, it was partly down to me. I hold my hand up, but you know I never wanted any of that to happen. If I could only turn back the clock. But you can't. Des is dead, Tony, because of what you did because of the drugs you were buying and selling, because of the company you were keeping and falling out with. I know, I know, and I'm never, ever going to forgive myself for that, but... I keep hoping that you might. Mum, I just want to be with you. I just want to make things right between us and look after you and help you. No, oh, Tony. It's OK, Mum. It's all right. <laughs> Must be seven. Are you sure you cut it right? Yeah, this must be number seven. Suppose someone's in? No, we're not on the front door anyway. And that guy at the garage said that he was up. This is the big bunch of time. Nah. If you're scared, go on then. Who's scared? I'm not scared. Right then, come on. Right, go on. Why is it always me? Because I'm the brains. What are your... And what do you want? Don't duck, let me <laughs> Well, I am. 
place, then? Well, you can't start staying out of place. It's just because he might be there. Any road, you've been using this pub a hell of a sight longer than he has. So go on, go and get a seat. I'll get the drinks. <laughs> ah, hello. Hello, love. Uh, I'll have uh, vodka and tonic for me yeah. and a glass of white wine for Sally. How is she? Not so good at the moment. But she'll be better. You and Greg have split up, are you? I thought it wouldn't last. I told you, didn't I? Yes, you did, Janice. Well, you'll just have to look after yourself now, won't you? But if you're thinking of asking Baldwin for your job back, you've no chance. Well, I'm not. Oh, Sally. She's made a right mess of her life, hasn't she, eh? Oh, give over, Janice. You come for a quiet drink, not aggravation. Hey, who's aggravating her? I'm on her side. Though there's not a lot of folk round here that are, I'll tell you. Stunning people shoving their two pen thing. It won't last. You're scandal of the week, that's all. Me too, it's coming over here. Sit tight. What do you want? You think you've got me sewn up, don't you? Running around, putting blocks on me? I well, don't go thinking you've finished with me yet. That's exactly what I've done. You'll find out different. And before too long, if you stay round here. Of course she's going to stay. Sally's got a lot of friends round here. Which is more than you have, so why don't you go back to wherever it came on in the first place? What's going on? What's wrong? It's all right, Alec. Nothing we can't handle. Did you go to London? Yeah. It's no good. What do you mean? There's nothing down there for me, Mum. I've got no chance. I've got no contacts. Contacts? You're talking about drugs? No, I've told you that's all behind me. That's all over forever, I swear. I'm talking about a decent job. I just want to settle down and get back to a proper way of living. That includes looking after you and making things right between us. I want to believe you, Tony. I'm telling you the truth. You know, I'm truly sorry about everything that's happened. Desi's brother hates you. He hates me? Why? What have you been telling him? Not me. Des. Des talked to him a couple of days before the men. Anyway, Des told him what you were mixed up in. Colin went to the police and said that he thought you knew more than you were saying. Well, what the hell's he stirring it for? He loved Des, Tony. Colin said that you know who killed them. You could tell the police who they were. No. Well, I think you could. It was the same two that broke in before, wasn't it? Look, I'll tell you one thing I do know for sure. If I shot them, they'd be after me. I'd be next. Anyway, after Colin went to the police, they came to see me. It was that Sergeant Reynolds. They asked me about you. Asked me if I had anything more to tell them. And what did you say? I said I hadn't. Thanks. Look, Mum, you know you're the only person in the world that I really trust. And I just want you to feel you can depend on me the same way I can depend on you. Tell you what, he's got some rubbish music. Pathetic. Enough for in the fridge. Starving. I tell you what, though, that means he's not just out, he's gone. He might come back. Nah, he's gone abroad. Police are after him. Hey, I wonder if he's got any beer? Nah, I looked. A couple of bottles of wine, though. Is the girl's drinking it? Wine. Well, it depends on how strong it is. I tell you what, we'll get some fish and chips one night, bring it back here and try the wine. I wish I said fish and chips. I'm starving. Oh, come on, then. We'll go back to our place, get something to eat. Hey, and listen, say nothing to no one. Got a great place here, and from now on, Sars, come on. I don't know what else I can say, Mum. I've told you I'm sorry. And I know what happened was partly down to me, but there is nothing I can do that's going to turn back the clock. I just want to make things right between us. Start again. You know, lead a decent life. That's why I've come back. But if it's what you want, I'll clear it out of your life and I'll never bother you again if that's what you want. Oh, Tony, leave it, will you? You know that's not what I want. Well, I'm glad we got that straight. Look, I've been on the go for a few days. I've not had much chance to get cleaned up. 
Is all right if I take a bath before you chuck me out? Of course you can have a bath. And who said anything about chucking you out? <laughs> Thanks, Mum. You're brilliant. There's a clean towel in the airing cupboard. Right. So this is uh, what's left of the business they had. Mm. Knickers as far as the eye can see. I bet you've had dreams like this. Hey, now then. Coarseness doesn't become you, Rita. No, what she needs, you see, is a, is a garage or a lock-up shed or something. Now, listen. They're on my floor in my flat and I'm not complaining. I tell you what, though, Alec, that Greg Kelly's a swine. Oh, he conned her, cheated her, robbed her, and he hit her. What? Knocked her about? And now, don't pass that on. She's the talk of the chip shop as it is already without that. Oh, yeah, well, no, no, I mean, I, I'll say no. When's she going? I mean, she's going to have to have a place of her own, isn't she? Well, I'm not kicking her out. Well, no, no, but, I mean, if she's wanting them little girls back, she's got to have her own set-up. Well, of course she has, but until she finds somewhere, she's welcome here. It's not putting you out. This is my flat she's sharing, not yours. Yeah, well, anyway, anyway if, you, if you get fed up one night, you know, the overcrowding, the door's there. You can just slip through to my side any night. No, what well, while Sally's here, Alec, it wouldn't be right. Likes waking his old pal, and his pal's pal like sleeps. Hey lads, that's all awesome I'm saying. Oh no! What's up? Yeah, I can't put up with this. What? Like, the mess. I mean, look at it. Oh yeah, it is a bit untidy, isn't it? Tidy. What have I told you? If you can't find a tablecloth, put newspaper down. And the fridge looks like a swarm of locusts been through it. Oh no, this is too much. I've had enough. I'm going for a drink. I'll come with you. No, no. I would rather go on my own. And when I come back, I want to see this place straight, like it was after I cleared up this morning. And then you and me are going to have a little talk, Jackie, about how much longer you're staying. See what you've done, soft ollies. Get this place cleaned up. Watching this? Marcus, do one, Kitter. He's going to be very busy indeed. Oh, that's not fair. He made just as much mess as me. Later. Hard luck. Now listen up, Tyrone and Sylvester. You're gonna get us chucked out of here with your cheeky back talk and your mess and your nasty ways. Why can't you be more like me, eh? Well, feels good to be clean again. Um, I found this shirt in the wardrobe. That's Des's shirt. Yeah, I know that, Mum. You don't mind, do you? Yes, I do. You're not fit to wear anything of his. Don't you talk to me about feeling clean, Tony. You with your dirty drugs for sale. You told me it was over, you swore to me. You've been going through my jacket, haven't you? You've no rights. Don't you come to me with your rights. What right have you got to come in here and lie to me and tell me you're sorry and you've changed, you disgust me. You've taken my stuff, where is it? In a safe place. <gasps> Who's that? Sergeant Reynolds, to talk to you. Reynolds, but he don't know I'm here. Oh, yes, he does. Because I phoned him after I found your supplies. Mum! I haven't told him, Tony. And I hope I don't have to. So talk to him. Give him all the help he needs. Suspense. 
You know my son? Tony? Yes. Hello again, Mr Horrocks. I think we need to talk. All right. Don't we start putting dinner on? What's up? I found this on the summer's always clothes. Well, what is it? A diary. Ashley should go mad if she finds you reading that. She's gone mad already. It's not a diary, it's more like... It's letters, letters to Shannon. Ashley, calm down. So she's writing things down, so what? I can understand that. It's just like writing down what you say to Shannon if she was still alive. Oh, well, listen. Listen to this. We aren't separated forever, Shannon. One day we'll be together. You and me together again. I'll be with each other. Lots of people believe in an afterlife. I might myself, I'm not sure, but all religions talk about this sort of thing. I count the days till we are united. Till then, Nirab will keep you safe for me. And Ben will keep me safe with the love of Nirab. Ben will keep me safe. What the hell does that mean? And it goes on and on like this, over and over. All right, it does sound a bit weird. It's these Foundation people. They've got to not know in which way's up. Yeah, but she's going to be back tomorrow, isn't she? If she comes back... I'll ask you again. These men who attacked you, the men who killed your stepfather, were they the same men who broke in and beat you a few days before? As I told you before, it happened too fast. But you saw the attackers each time. You got a clear view. You know, when someone's trying to bash you, you're not just standing there all calm. I think they were the same, yeah. Mr. Colin Barnes tells me you know these men. He's made a statement saying that his brother spoke to him after the first attack. He says your stepfather told him you recognised these attackers. You knew them. They were after you to teach you a lesson. Is that so, Mr Horrocks? You know these men? You got that wrong. Oh, for God's sake, Tony. Stop lying, will you? They killed Des. They're walking about out there and you know who they are. Tell him, please. You owe it to Des. You owe it to me. You don't know what you're asking. You just don't understand. OK, Mr Horrocks, I think we have to move on. We'll carry on with this interview down at the police station. Come on. Oh, yeah, well, thanks, Mum. Thanks for everything. <laughs>